C'est à Olao, dans le sud du Portugal, en Algarve, que Juan a commandé à Roo Falcato Pereira un requin très rare, qui n'existe dans aucun autre aquarium au monde, et qui lui a son nom à la couleur bleue cobalt de sa livrée, le requin peau bleue. So whenever we, we need a shark, uh, when we get an order from uh, an aquarium, we will actually have to charter a sports fishing boat and we go out and collect them. Uh, this is a very delicate process because sharks, or I should say pelagic sharks, which are the ones that are really uh, more abundant in Portuguese waters, they're extremely sensitive. So there's a few things we really have to watch. We have to get small animals, because large animals would not survive uh, the capture or the collection or even the transport. And um, we have to use circle hooks. Uh, a circle hook is something that it's sort of bent on the inside and it lodges primarily on the, on the corner of the mouth of the animal. This is very important so that the animal doesn't swallow the hook, which of course could cause Um, injuries and, and eventually might even kill it. And then of course we, we ride the boat as fast as humanly possible back to shore. So by doing all of these things we can actually catch small sharks from the Portuguese shore and acclimate them um, nicely into our holding tank in Olhão. Ainsi débute cette journée qui sera peut-être une grande première. Le bassin, les lignes et les appâts sont prêts. Un sac rempli de morceaux de poisson et de sang est jeté par-dessus bord afin de stimuler l'appétit des requins, même les plus timides. Et la réponse des squales ne se fait pas attendre. Au bout de quelques minutes, le premier juvénile peau bleue mord à l'hameçon. À cet âge et à cette taille, les squales ne posent qu'une résistance de principe ce qui permet de les ramener au bateau sans les blesser ou les épuiser. The small sharks we we bring them back to shore which is originally the plan. With the large sharks if it's strong enough, robust enough, we will measure it. We'll try to get an estimate of weight. We will see if it's a male or a female and we'll tag it and release it back to the wild. The information of the tagging process is sent to the National Marine Fishery Service in the United States. They keep a very good database that's more than 50 years old and that's got the hundreds of thousands of sharks and other fish uh, tagged all over the world. Uh, this is very good from a scientific point of view because it allows us to study the distance the animals have traveled between tagging and recapture and it'll also allow us to see how much did they grow in length uh, and um, in that time period that they were at liberty. Une fois capturé, il n'y a pas de temps à perdre. 
Il faut ramener au plus vite le jeune requin à l'aquarium, car il ne supporterait pas un voyage de plusieurs heures. Juan ne recevra pas son requin tout de suite. Il va devoir patienter des mois encore. Et pendant tout ce temps, l'équipe de Joao va étudier et observer son comportement. Comment ce requin très actif, qui a besoin de nager sans cesse pour envoyer de l'eau vers ses bronchies, va réagir dans un bassin Va-t-il s'alimenter correctement Ne pas se blesser Ne pas tomber malade Au moindre problème, le pot bleu sera relâché. Pure ethics is, is obviously the, our main concern, uh, obviously also animal well-being. Um, we realize that we are taking wild animals from their natural habitat and we're putting them in a captive environment. But we do it for a reason, uh, and I'll give you a, a quick example. 30 years ago, everybody thought sharks were horrible machines that kill every human being they can. And, and now, in the present, we, everybody knows that this is not real at all. And that change in the public's perception, it really is due to public aquarium and other zoological facilities around the world. So again, we are indeed extracting these very few animals from the wild, but we're using them to protect all of the other ones that are left in the wild.